Hey y'all, it's Brooke with HubSpot. Today, I'm going to show you how you can manage your meetings with our Meetings API. This API allows you to create new meetings in your HubSpot account, get data on meetings already in your account, and update or delete any meetings that you need to. With this API, you can track meetings that were scheduled outside of HubSpot and associate them with your contacts. Or you can supplement the built-in tracking of the HubSpot Meetings tool to track how your meetings with prospective clients and customers went. First, let's see how you build a new meeting inside of your HubSpot account. Let's go to the left-hand main navigation and click on CRM and then Contacts. Now let's choose any contact. Then under the right panel where you see their name, their email, and their company, you can click on the little meeting icon button. This will bring up the scheduler, and then you can add in a title and a date, as well as the location. You can add any scheduled reminder emails and attendee description. Also, if you have this connected to your external calendar, it will show up when you have availability so you don't overbook yourself. Let's go ahead and click on save. And now inside of the middle column under activities, you should see that meeting show up in the upcoming meetings. Great, now let's use our meetings API. In order to use our meetings API, we're going to be using a private app. So let's build one quickly to get the private app token. In the top navigation, click on the settings icon. And then in the left-hand side, click on private apps. From here in the top, click on create a private app. And then let's give this a name of meetings. Next, let's click on the scopes tab and then we're going to click on add new scope. Here, we're going to add the scopes for contact, read and write. So let's search for contact. And then let's choose read and write. We'll need read so that we can get the data when we get all of the meetings. And we'll need write when we create a new meeting. Next, let's get the meetings scope. And here, this will allow us to read the meetings link. And then once we have those, let's click on update. And then in the top right, click create app. The pop-up window will make sure to remind you that you need to keep your private app token safe. Let's go ahead and click continue creating. And then we're going to click on show token and copy. And now we're going to close. Great, now that we have our private app token, let's go into Postman to make some test calls. Inside of Postman, I created a new collection. This will allow us to add our authorization once, and then all of the calls underneath that will use that same authorization. So. Click on the authorization tab and then under auth type, click on the drop down and choose bearer token. Then in the token section, paste in your private app token. Then click save. Now that that's been saved, let's make a new call. Go over and hover over HubSpot meetings, click on the three dots and then click on add request. So the first request we're going to do is get all meetings. So this will get all the meetings that are currently in our HubSpot account. So now let's go over to the developer documentation to see the endpoints. This will be linked down in the description below, so make sure to check that out. On our documentation, let's go to basic and choose list. And then we're going to go ahead and grab this endpoint URL. And now what we'll need to add to our query parameters are the properties that we want to get from the meetings, as well as the associations. So any contacts that are associated with this meeting. First, let's see the different properties that we can include inside of our request. On this page, you'll see a list of all the default properties that meetings have. So for this call, we want to grab the HS meeting title, HS meeting body, the HS meeting external URL, which will have the URL to the external calendar link, either in Google Calendar or Outlook, the HS meeting location, and the HS meeting start time. And all of the dates will be in UTC format. All right, now that we know the properties we need, let's go into Postman to make this call. Inside of Postman, let's go ahead and paste in our URL. And then inside of our query parameters, first let's do properties, and then we add in our values. You're going to separate all of the properties you want with a comma. So we need HS meeting title, HS meeting body, HS meeting external URL, HS meeting location, and HS meeting start time. Then we also want to grab the associations. So we'll add that as a new parameter, associations. And this is going to take in the object ID that you want. In this case, we want the contact object, which is 0-1. 
Now that we've set all of those query parameters up, let's go ahead and click send. Great, our call was successful. Now let's look at the results. In our results, the first thing you'll see is the meeting ID and then the properties that we called, as well as the create date property and the last modified date property. And then as we scroll down, we'll see the associations. This one is going to show the contacts because that's the object ID we called. And then it will show the ID of the object record. It does not show the name of the contact. You would have to then make a call to the contacts API and send along this ID if you wanted to get the information about this contact record. All right, now let's go ahead and create a post request to create a new meeting within our account. First, we're going to hover over the HubSpot meetings collection, click on the three dots, and then click on add request. This one we're going to call create new meeting. And instead of this being a get request, this is going to be a post request. So now let's go back to the documentation to see what we need to send along to create a new meeting in our account. Inside of our documentation, we're gonna just scroll down until we see the create endpoint. Let's go ahead and copy over our endpoint, and then let's look at the parameters that we need. So for this one, you will need the associations parameter to associate it to a contact record. For this one, you will be able to choose the association type. In this case, it'll just be a HubSpot defined one and we also will need the contact object ID. And then we can also send along the different properties that we want that would include the name, the location, those kinds of things. So now let's go over to Postman to put in this information. First, let's put in our URL. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the body tab and then click on raw and it will be in JSON format. So there's a lot of stuff we need to send along with our body so if you go over to our documentation, it has an example request that you can send along. So I went ahead and copied over the example from the documentation. So let's go ahead and paste that in. Now we're going to scroll up and we can see our properties. And so now let's see what we have to send along. We have to send along a timestamp. Let's go ahead and just change this to 2025-01-16, which is today's date. We don't need the HubSpot owner ID, so let's just go ahead and delete that out. But everything else is good. We just wanna change the meeting start time again to be 2025 instead of 2021. And then we see our associations. For this, we need to send along the record ID of the contact we're associating with. So let's go to our HubSpot account to grab a contact record ID. In our main navigation, let's click on CRM and then click on contacts. Let's choose a random contact. And then in the right sidebar, we can click on actions and view all properties. And then we can search for record ID. And now we can copy this over and put this into Postman. So now instead of our ID being 101, let's change it to 702. And the type is HubSpot defined. That's just the association type, that's fine. And we won't associate this to another contact. You can associate a meeting to multiple contacts. All right. Now that our body is set up, let's go ahead and click on send. And we got a 201 created, which means that we successfully made our call. Let's go back to that contact that we just added it to so we can see this inside of the activities tab. So here on the properties, we're gonna click on back. And then under activities, we should see that new meeting that we just created. Awesome, so that's how you use the HubSpot meetings API. Please make sure to like this video, subscribe to the HubSpot Developers YouTube channel, and I'll see y'all in another video. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye.